Welcome back. Just about 6.52. Time for the morning sprint. Breaking news this morning. Buckingham Palace says that the Queen has been placed under medical supervision. Her doctors are concerned for her health. Uh, she has canceled a meeting of her Privy Council. As a result, the palace says the 96-year-old monarch is comfortable as she rests at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. Continuing coverage on that story coming up on CBS Mornings. Meantime, some more developing news locally. A heavy police presence on I-90-94 overnight at US-12 near the Dells. All westbound lanes were closed overnight since 7.30, so about eight hours. They just opened up in the last two hours. Two semis were involved in a crash here. Authorities say there were no serious injuries. That stretch of interstate again reopened within the last two hours here. A deadly situation playing out in Memphis, Tennessee last night. Police say that a man drove around the city apparently shooting at random Wednesday evening. It killed four, wounded three. Hours after the rampage started, police took the suspect into custody. Police say there are reports that the man was recording his actions on Facebook. We might never know why 10 people were fatally stabbed, 18 others injured in an incident in Canada. This after the second suspect in the case died after he was arrested. There were reports police rammed the suspect's vehicle before he surrendered. The fugitive's brother and fellow suspect was also found dead Monday near the stabbing sites. In Nevada, police have arrested a Los Vegas area public official in connection to the stabbing death of a local reporter. Las Vegas Metropolitan Police searched the home of Robert Tellis, a Clark County public administrator Wednesday. Tellis is a suspect in the stabbing death of Jeff Gehrman. Gehrman was a reporter for the Las Vegas Review Journal. He was found stabbed to death outside of his home on Friday. Gehrman said, or Gehrman said that uh, Gehrman had reported on problems in Telus's office related to a hostile work environment and an inappropriate staff relationship. We're trying to get more information about an officer-involved shooting Tuesday night back here in Wisconsin in Adams County. It happened in Strong's Prairie just before 7. The events leading up to the shooting are still unclear. The only confirmed information we have, a deputy was called after reports of a man walking down the road. When the deputy approached, they found him to be armed. The deputy ultimately shooting and killing the man on scene. Disabled voters in Wisconsin do not need to certify their disability when they have someone else return their ballot. That is new guidance just passed by the Wisconsin Elections Commission. It comes after a federal court ruled that Wisconsin must allow disabled voters who are unable to physically return their ballot to get help from a third party. There was debate among party lines on whether to make voters certify their disability, but a single Republican commissioner crossed party lines to vote with Democrats. Starting at 9 a.m. today, you'll be able to buy single game tickets for Badger men's hockey games. Non-conference home games start at 18 bucks each. Big Ten matchups start at $24, except for the match against Minnesota. The first home series of the season is against Ohio State. That starts October 14th. Boy, campus is a buzz again. Day two of the fall semester at UW-Madison. Enrollment numbers from the University's of Official census not yet available, but officials expect the incoming freshman class of about 8,600 to be the university's largest class ever. This year's Ironman Wisconsin race just a couple days away, but competitors can now start preparing for next year's race. The organization announcing the triathlon will return to Madison on September 10th of 2023. This year, by the way, marks the 20th running of the Ironman Wisconsin. All right, folks, tonight is your last chance to visit the Madison Night Market of the Year. The event will feature a special ribbon-cutting ceremony for Madison's first-ever Rainbow Street Crossing, which honors and celebrates the city's LGBTQ community. The ceremony starts at 4 p.m. right at the top of State Street. Steve Bannon, once former President Trump's chief White House strategist, is expected to surrender to New York authorities this week. It's for charges related to a fundraising effort to build a wall along the southern border. Bannon is calling the pending indictment phony. He was pardoned by Trump on the federal level, but the Manhattan District Attorney opened a separate probe. Probe. And I'm looking at your bus forecast. Once again, a few areas of fog out there, but otherwise, temperatures should be very nice to get on and off. Otherwise, we're seeing the fog that we've mentioned out to the west. Conditions look good, about 80, 81 to 2 degrees. And then otherwise, we're going to see wet conditions start off by Saturday night and Sunday, and the temperatures then cool off to where they should be this time of year. So. Okay. Greg, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll have a live news update here in about 30 minutes.